Thank you, local band Smoke Out. Just gonna make the post confused at the link. By the one and oh. only Bullet to the Heart, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, hell yeah. Whoa. And I can't see you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is there any way you guys could squeeze in just a little bit more? Perfect, perfect. Hell yeah. Thank you both for being here. Uh, I appreciate you. If you could do me a favor and uh, introduce yourself real fast, let us know whereabouts in the world you are. Plug and promote anything you'd like. I'll go first. Uh, so what's up, guys? I'm Audrey Queen, a.k.a. the Queen of Darkness, and I'm the lead singer of Bullet to the Heart. Uh, you got Draven DC on drums here. And we are from Chicago, Illinois. Hell yeah. Toss yeah, out all, we, toss out all your uh, social medias uh, real quick so everybody knows where to follow. Yeah, yeah uh, we're most active probably on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, um, but we do have a TikTok. Anywhere you could search Bullet to the Heart, we probably have an account on there, Bullet to the Heart, Bullet to the Heart Band. Awesome. Hell yeah. Awesome. I'm joined by uh, my buddy Panic today who helped set this up. He is a huge fan. He saw you guys open up for Rolling Courts, so I'd actually like to start there. What was what was it like uh, playing with them and just hanging out with them? On, uh, are you a fan of theirs in general? Well, I bumped into the band when they warmed up, and I, I approached Audrey after the show, and I said, you know, can I contact you guys for an interview? And she looked at me like, who is this crackpot? <laughs> and then I turned around and walked away, and she's like, I'll never see him again, so surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <yeah>, were funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was, it was really cool. Um, their management team was like super nice. Meeting the girls yeah. was wonderful. Um, they really know how to work a crowd and kill it on stage. So it was kind of just like it was cool to just hang hang out with them and kind of experience that whole night. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Hell yeah! Going by Queen of the Darkness, do do. You, do fans of yours go to shows dressed as vampires like I have today? <laughs> they do not, but they do. Not yet. Not yet. But as of late, when people do meet me, they'll like do like a little bow or something. Be like, oh, my queen. And I'm like, <laughs> Hell oh. yeah. <laughs> I love sure. that. I love that. Oh, yeah. uh, Panic, go ahead and shoot a couple questions out. Um, it, it, so this... This interview was supposed to go off before you guys went on your nationwide tour, but we couldn't quite pull it off. So now you're in the middle, in between tours, right? The first leg and the and the second leg. So yep. um, uh, uh, share your most memorable moment from the first half of the tour. Everybody has a funny oh, story. There's a lot. There's a lot. I, I'm <laughs> something. I'll, I'll try to remember something. Well, I guess. <laughs> One of the more uh, memorable moments for me, uh, we got like halfway to the tour and we had a day off the next day. Uh, we were in New York and some guy approached us and literally bought the shirt off of Draven's back. Yeah, well, first of all, first of all, this guy is like jet, like super built, right? <laughs> like massively built. Yeah. And, and he comes up to me and he's like, man, he goes, I really want that shirt signed. And I'm like, oh, the, you know, the shirts are 30 bucks. And he goes, nah, brother, I want your shirt. And I'm like, <laughs> my shirt? Like, You're like, okay. Page. I'm gonna say and no. he's like, yeah, man. He goes, what's it going to take? I was like, oh, 100 bucks, you know, cash. And he's like, all right, let's do it. This dude takes his shirt off. Again, Jack. So he wanted dude. to trade shirts with you in addition yes. to 100 bucks. I, I wanted his. It was like a, what, what was that? It was, it was like some workout some shirt. It was like a, like a gym shirt. And we, we swapped shirt, and he had everybody sign it, and then he bought everybody shots, and we all got kind of wasted. Yeah, so. we all got wasted, but <laughs> the cool part about it was is we got wasted with Texas Hippie Coalition. So it wasn't just us getting wasted as a band. They were yeah. kind of like, hey, we're going to get on in on this. So we were having a great time. I ended up going back to the hotel with Rado's hat. Uh, that dude also took Rado's jacket. Um, and then never returned <laughs> And then never returned it. <laughs> so it was just, it was a crazy night. That's probably the most memorable for me, which is getting drunk with those guys. They're just super, they're super awesome. All of them to death. That's fine. Yeah, we're doing shots of, shots of bourbon. Yeah. That'll get you. That'll get you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It got us pretty quick.
they were doing the red stag, but it was funny because the guy just starts buying the shots for both bands. Now, like all bands are, are drinking and the buddy's like, Oh, don't worry about it. He's loaded. And I'm like, Oh, okay. All right. Pour me another one, you know, but it was really cool connecting with a, a fan in a weird way. You know, it was something different. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Very. Um, Postmortem, the, the ballad, the sad track off of uh, Death Oddities and uh, Romance is unique as we usually hear you playing hard rock and alternative metal. So how are you inspired to finally write a ballad? Ooh, starting strong. Yeah, really strong. Um, <laughs> Somebody's got to ask the questions. <laughs> yeah. The tough ones. When, uh, when, I, when, we, when I was given these songs and I was given the first four, I definitely knew I wanted to write songs like Bullbeat does. So they were more like Rocky. And then when I was handed postmortem, it kind of got me in my feelings a little bit. And it made me think about, um, this was a personal one for me in my own story. It made me think about back in 2017, um, when we first started out as Bullet to the Heart, under our name, under our members, uh, Brian and Tom, I, un I had to undergo emergency surgery because I had an eight centimeter ovarian cyst burst and bleed a liter of blood onto my abdomen. And I was an hour away from literally bleeding to death and not coming back. Oh my God. Um, so when I thought about this song, it was my, if I had died that day, it would have been my final goodbye. And it was more of a personal song too, because I had been dating Draven for, I think three years at that point, two years, I'd known him for three. And it was kind of going to be like my final, um, goodbye to him. Um, so, but luckily now, and like before that I could, I didn't want to live. I was super depressed. I was anxious all the time. So I think that was like the day I was 22 years old. That was the day where I was like, man, I really want to live because I have a lot to live for. I have this new band. I have this new boyfriend that I love. And I really just want to like live another day. So that's kind of uh, where postmortem came out of. Wow. Thank you for sharing. That's a, uh, it's a wild story. We're glad you're here with us though. Here with us thank rocking. You. I want to ask some fun ones. Um, it's kind of, a, it's kind of a two part question. Uh, what do you guys do right before you go on stage? Do you have any pre-show rituals? And then also to roll off that, Audrey, do, what do you do vocally right before it's performance time? Any any methods or tips and tricks? So I don't think we really have any pre-show rituals. I mean, Tom and I used to flip each other off before we went on. And then, then I don't know what happened to that. Kinda, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a, hey, Tom, fuck you. It was kind of like that. Um, but for me, I usually, I have a vocal app uh, where I do like a couple quick warm-ups before I go on, a couple classical warm-ups, because even though I am self-taught, I also have classical training. So I do a little bit of like classical warm-ups, and um, we, I do a lot of just like jumping around because I'm anxious. You know, Tom will be like, you're going to do fine. You'll be fine. And I'm like, I know I'll be fine. Just let me get it out. <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me have an episode. Yeah, let me just have an episode real quick. But yeah, there's nothing like something we really do. It's kind of like, let's go, guys. And what do you do for a warm up, vocal warm up? Are you done now? Oh, you did? I like zoned out. Right. Uh, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Disassociating <you>, right now. <laughs> I'm going to let Panic ask a couple here in a second. But before we do, did were you guys prepped on the trivia and the hot sauce? Yes. What did you bring? We brought Bullet to the Heartburn. It is the Bullet to the Heart in-house made hot sauce. What? I thought that was all yeah, where, out. where can we get that? that? Is it on? Is, yeah. It's on, it, it is on our website. <laughs> it's on our big cartel. We you also had them at the show. Yeah, so we have our own, and then we also have, uh, it's made by Psycho Pepper. We have a green sauce that's his sauce. So you're you're pros at, at, at hot sauce. This is oh, going to be yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, um, what movie or TV show, if you could agree on one or the other, have you seen the most, a movie or a TV show? I'm gonna look up trivia on what you select, try and stump you. If I can, whether I can or can't, I'm gonna do hot sauce regardless, but if I can, please join more me. More movie or more TV show, is that what it is? Yeah. No, one one or the other. Probably movie, we don't really watch a lot of TV. So what movie have we watched? Any movie. Oh. Ooh, that's that's what he's one. saying, because he's gonna look up trivia on it. Ooh, that's a hard any, one. Any anime? She doesn't watch anime. <laughs> oh, I read somewhere where you guys bond over anime. That was uh, me, Brian, and Tom. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh. The yeah, boys we are, are watching. watching. All we right. Well, <laughs> uh, what, I don't know what's a, what's a movie. That, that's a tough one, man. 
the movie, and personally, the movie that I've watched the most in my lifetime is The Other Guys. Okay, with, with Wahlberg? Yes, or, or uh, yeah, or the Harry Potter movies. Because I, I used to watch The Other Guys before bed, like, every night when I was 18. <laughs> Draven, have you seen the Harry Potter movies? Yes. He has. So that, that'd be... Wait, yes. You know what? Wait, wait. Let's do Harry Potter because we have tattoos. Okay, cool. Any particular <laughs> Harry Potter movie that is, is you've seen more than any other one? We can go Goblet that far. Goblet of Fire. That's what I want to do? Yes. Not Azkaban? No, Goblet of Fire. All right, Goblet of Fire, I guess. Let's mm-hmm. go. Okay, give me a second to look up trivia on that. Panic, take it away. All right. Um, I'm going to show BG how to have a little fun. Um, <laughs> quoting another interview, Brian Benachek was discovered playing out by himself with nothing but a guitar. It sounds like you guys found him out on the street somewhere and he drugged Tom along with him. How did you guys actually get together? So, um, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on that for a minute. So we were in a different band, her and I, we were in a different band. We had a headline show. It was supposed to be an album release. And the other band members that we had at the time never finished the album. So we did this album show with no album. And uh, it was those two band members last show with us. And we go on stage and we're, we're the headliner. And one of the openers was Brian Beneshek. And he literally played with just a guitar and a backtrack. And we were kind of laughing at this dude because I'm like, this guy is so effing talented. And he's up there playing new like a computer track playing Mind metal song. music to just a, with a guitar. And we approached him after the show and we're like, hey, like, do you want to jam in like an actual band? And he was like, oh, you know, maybe maybe we'll think about it. And we met with Brian and kind of hung out with him for a little bit, played a couple shows with like a sub bass player. And then he ended up bringing Tom in and I kind of forced them to learn seven songs in like two weeks. And we started playing shows. Then we rebranded and they haven't left. So. Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome little backstory. Let's prepare the hot sauce because I'm ready to go. Here we go. Harry Potter. You got to pick it. This is your trivia question. Who besides Cedric Diggory helped Harry figure out the puzzle of understanding the task of the golden egg? Oh, um, it was Moaning Myrtle. That is correct. Yep. My wife made me watch all those movies. I must look up a harder one, but that is correct. You don't have to do the hot sauce, but you're, of course, welcome to join. I have to do hot sauce and wasabi at the same time. Nice. Both at the same time. I have no wasabi. I ate it all last night. Bummer. I got the the question right. Yeah, I heard. (laughs) I knew you would. (laughs) He has such a hot sauce and wasabi. Oh, what's Jesus. what's the what's the hardest song for you? And he's got spicy uh, some some jing. Is that how you say it? Yep. Mm. Uh, what's the mm. hardest song for you guys to perform in your set right now? And why is it a little more difficult than the other ones? Good question. Answer vocally first. For me, I think it has to be in our set. I mean, we are adding it to our set. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I would say it's Death by the Sea. Because vocally, uh, how I wrote that, that's a, that's a challenging song for me. It pushes the limits of my vocals and what I'm used to. And that is my fault because that's how I wrote it. <gasps> what about you? Um, I would say maybe Black Widow. Okay. Really? Well, I, I think just maybe instrumentally because like you have to you have to yeah. know all of like almost like the polyrhythms and the breakdown and yeah. all of the little like trigger stuff and. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, I like, I like music. Once you jam them enough times, they're all easy. Yeah, but. that's true. Yeah, I think, I think mainly it's, it's vocals. You know, it's when something is either a slightly above her range or slightly out of the range, it's a lot hard on her because she's also got to move and perform and nail the note. Right. Totally. Panic. Uh, go ahead and do uh, one or two more, and I'll be all ready. Right. I'll be ready on the next question. All right. Terrific. Um. How do you guys think the second half of the tour will compare to the first half of the tour? I mean, you guys are going to be out with uh, Ingve Malmsteen and Glenn Hughes. Um, do you envision that that will be bigger than the first half of the tour? So it should be. It should be larger audiences. It's definitely larger venues. Um, the THC tour 
it was a mixture of small theaters to large theaters to small clubs to bars. So it was kind of all over the place. Inve is a little bit more bougie just by nature. So these should all be really big shows. Um, I don't know if we're even going to meet Inve due to the really? nature. Really? Yeah, due to the nature of how just he is. I've, I've heard he's yeah, a diva. Yeah. Um, so I, I we really liked hanging out with Texas Hippie. So I think maybe the morale might be a little lower, but the shows should be bigger. We're also planning a set that's a little more thematic than the TXT okay. run. Yes. So we were actually doing the full vampire outfits every night, full light production, and uh, it's going to be a little bit more uh, choreographed than than usually. Oh, so cool. your show will actually be different from the yeah. first half of the tour. That's yes. pretty awesome. So rewatchability. If you went out for the first half of the tour and saw the band. Go see him on the second half of the tour. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Let's try. Uh, I'm going to try one more time. I've seen this movie, but I've, I've seen all the Harry Potter movies just one time ever. Um, and I watched them all over a weekend. My wife made me do it. Uh, and they were they were okay. There's nothing nothing against them. Just wasn't my thing. So I don't know any of these if they're hard or not. But here's your next and last Harry Potter Goblet of Fire question. What was Harry dreaming about? The first time he woke up with this, with his scar on fire. Oh my god. I have a guess. A go ahead, guess. guess. Just go ahead. You might what, be what, doing wasn't that it wasn't it uh his parents' death? Right? Wasn't it the death and then Voldemort whispering in his ear and stuff? Is that it? <laughs> There's one other main character in this dream that you're missing, and it says specifically another name. What's the other name in the dream? Think of the dream. I can't remember the first dream, because one of the dreams were dreams of Cedric Diggory dying. I don't think it's the first one. We'll lock in that answer so we have something. I'm just going to lock in that answer. I'm going to say that is not enough. Not oh, enough. Okay. It says Voldemort and Wormtail specifically are plotting to kill him. That's right. Oh, that is okay. I know what that is because he's in the first person of the guy that dies in the house. He, yeah, he sees the. He's yes. I know it's that. Enjoy, enjoy the hot sauce uh, again. We'll do some with you as we'll panic and we'll all suffer together while we do a couple more questions and then we'll let you guys go. We pre yeah, really appreciate your time and we appreciate yeah, you happen. suffering, but enjoying your own hot sauce. So that's a win for everybody. I'm going to take the cap off real quick. Ooh, it's getting dangerous. Because <laughs> uh -oh. it won't come out. <laughs> <laughs> it's so thick. <laughs> you wanted to go first? <laughs> Cheers. Oh. Dude, that's oh. spicy. Yeah, it's been sitting a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the longer it sits, the hotter it gets, so keep that in mind. I'm going to ask two more questions, and I'm going to send it to Panic for a couple. Um, two questions, and you can answer them in any order. Having having been, I would say you're a fairly experienced band by this point, what mistake did you make in your career that you, that uh, we have a lot of local bands and smaller artists that watch this channel. You don't want them to make this mistake. And number two, is there anything you can tell us beyond this second half of the tour that we're allowed to know? I know sometimes that stuff is not allowed to be said yet for planning reasons, but are you allowed to tell us anything? Yeah, um, we're booking a small tour, Midwest tour in end of October. And 2024, we're coming out with a new EP. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So we actually uh, just started, well, we kind of started to finish the EP this weekend. We wrote new music, but also finished that EP. We want to be ahead of the game. So we got like four or five songs on the EP, and then we have another about four or five singles. One of them's a cover, and we're going to just kind of release a bunch of stuff next year, including the EP. Hell yeah. And then what about uh, band advice, like a mistake you may have made early in your career? Don't so do this. Band advice. Um, I would say... Take your time with music. Take your time writing. Take your time uh, recording. Make sure every single person is happy with it. Um, one of the mistakes we made early on is we kind of just felt like we had to get something out, that we needed to release music. So I think, in my opinion, the first two albums have mistakes or stuff wasn't rewritten or structurally we weren't satisfied with them. It's why we don't play some of the earlier songs. 
And it's because we felt like we had this deadline that was virtually invisible. Got you. We just felt like we need something new. We need something new. Internet, blah, blah, blah. And it's like we should have taken our time and honed in stuff before just dropping nothing, you know. So I definitely say, like, take your time writing. Be an artist. Take your time creating. And uh, don't be afraid to fail and start from scratch. Great advice. Cool. All right. Well, you guys got Ingve to intimidate uh, Brian, and you've got uh, Glenn Hughes to intimidate Tom. Um, Draven, there's no famous drummers on the tour. Did did, did you arrange this? <laughs> yes, I uh, I apparently <laughs> uh, am so intimidating. They didn't want to hire anybody that was well known. <laughs> if you could include one, who would you include? Who would be your pick? Alive or, or live or dead? I don't care. That's I mean, BG's one. dressed as a as a vampire, so it could be either. <laughs> I don't really get in- intimidated easily. Um, I would probably. He's not really in a band anymore, though. Just like. Uh, Kobus Prodigy. It'd be an honor to share the stage with him. He's a really very technical uh, drummer that I've like looked up to on the internet. Um, so if we were ever on the same show, that would I, that I would be probably be really hard to follow. Or even going before him, so. Okay, you guys hit the stage out in Chicago when I was there, and and I wondered because I had to go and look. You guys formed before COVID, right? Oh yeah. So twenty seventeen. Yep, twenty seventeen. You guys played together. Then we went through COVID together, and then you came out the other side. So my question is, you know the band obviously formed before the pandemic. So what did you guys do to get through the pandemic? Did you play together? Did you visit each other? Did you do stuff online? How did you cope with almost two years of nothingness? Yeah. So, um, so COVID hit us really hard. We had a lot of tours that ended up canceling, um, that we were really upset about. One was with uh, new year's day. Uh, we're going to do a couple selected dates with like Quiet Riot and kind of like that kind of thing. Oh, we had yeah. some festivals lined up. It was the first time we were going to be on festivals. A lot of stuff like that with a new release that we were waiting on. So it was like Heartbreaker, I think, was new, Birth of a Tragedy. We were going to do a smaller, I think, a smaller album. And uh, when it hit, everything canceled. Uh, we lost a bunch of money because we already spent money on promotion and merchandise. Yep. We bought like, we had like 4,000 t-shirts at one point for all these big events. And uh, we lost money. So uh, everybody kind of had some personal issues being locked inside, uh, you know, um, kind of being locked in. Some of our friends went through a lot of stuff that affected us differently. And we were kind of separate for a little bit when it first happened because we thought it was supposed to be a two week thing, a three, four week thing. Then it was like two months. And we realized, hey, like, you know, we're not going to lay around and let this defeat us. So we met up and that's when we started writing uh, Death Oddities and Romance. Okay. So good deal. Took, a, took advantage of the time at least. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We started to kind of just hone in our craft uh, because we realized during that time, that's what truly makes us happy. You know, it's not playing video games on a Sunday or watching football or the soccer game or something. It's writing music and making sure that we're all good mentally, both for ourselves and each other. I popped in on you guys over the weekend, but I didn't say anything because I felt like I would be bothering you. So <laughs> never, never a bother. Never a bother. Yeah, it, was, it was fun to watch for a little while. Last question for me: Looking back six years to the first popular song, which was uh, um, "Locked Inside," I believe, right? Yeah. Um, describe how you think the band has evolved from that point till now. Yeah, so um, definitely in terms of quality, I think uh, we kind of like figured out the best way to record and release that recording. Um, I know Brian has grown a lot as a guitarist, just writing more parts, letting parts breathe so that she could write vocals. Um, Tom has gotten way better at just overall technical ability playing bass. Mm -hmm. Um, I kind of honed in my craft a little because I'm like a self-taught drummer. So I've never had any training whatsoever. And now looking back, like I was, I was a kid just kind of banging on the drums doing God knows what. Now I like take my time to make sure all the parts flow and figure itself out. And I also think lyrically she's grown a lot as well. If you want to then talk about your vocals. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, just starting from when I wrote Locked Inside, because that 
I, I wrote Locked and Set a long time ago. I think I wrote Locked when I was 19, 20, um, and now I'm 28. So vocally and lyrically, I've definitely grown. I've definitely gone through a lot more stuff. Um, and then I did get training in there going to college, um, being in choir. Uh, so that definitely helped strengthen my vocals. And then just doing a lot of reading and writing to uh, strengthen like lyrically and even looking at other bands, looking at other inspirations to to figure out like my writing sound, how I want to write. So, I mean, yeah, we've definitely like, we've grown up together like as, a, as people, as adults. So it's, it's really awesome to see, honestly. Hell yeah. Well, Audrey and Draven, we really appreciate your guys' time. Please stay safe on the road. We look forward to that, that new EP coming next year, some new singles. And uh, I, I, I want to ask one little follow-up question. Do you still have the 4,000 shirts? No. We uh, yeah, we have 200 left. But out of that 4,000, it took till... Oh, man. It took till a little after the rumors tour in it, end of 2022. End of 2022 is when we sold the last one. Well, good for you guys recuperating uh, a big bulk of it back, or it sounds like probably all of it back by the time. Yeah, o- over time. It, it's, I mean, it was a it was an investment. You know, you know, you're going to make it back eventually. You just got to play more shows and get out there more. But I remember selling the last shirt, and I was like, "Oh my god, like that's great." <laughs> that's but I also awesome. remember, yeah, I also remember getting to the point where you you make your investment back, and you realize the rest of the shirts were all profit. Yeah, yeah. and that was like an even better feeling because you're like, "Oh, everything else goes back in the our pocket," and towards a music video or the recordings or a van and we ended up buying a van we did uh the revenant music video with that money it was like it was kind of all just from that investment really that's so it took a while but we made it and it was really exciting so hell yeah well you guys have a fantastic day we appreciate you doing this uh if it's okay with you can i put this on youtube tomorrow morning absolutely, absolutely. blast it everywhere thanks for having us thanks for making me drink the hot sauce which i'm, uh, I'm glad i got i got too. one i got one <laughs> Available on the website too. Uh, yeah. Bullet to the heartburner. Is that is that correct? Heart, heartburn. Yeah. Heartburn. Heartburn. I'm going to I'm gonna have that later. So thank you. Hell yeah, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Bullet to the heart. Yeah, hell yeah. You guys have an awesome day. I appreciate it. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band Smokeout.